Hey everybody, this is the Scotsman at Alabama Pipe Welders Academy. We're going to do some uh, core met stainless steel flux coated TIG wire on a root only. It's some 316. A lot of times if you can't get a purge, you'll be asked to use this wire uh, instead of purging the pipe. Alright, for the fit up, we're going to use a 532 gap. 1 8 316 wire with the flux coated core met brand. Uh, it works really well put our tacks in here we're going to weld this thing in a 5g position so we're going to back feed the bottom and probably keyhole dip the top half quarters at about 95 amps and we'll put these tacks in and let you look at it see how it looks and move on from there now just keep in mind this is flux coated wire so there will be a slag left on top of the weld and on the inside of the face of the root so until you knock that slag off, you're not gonna see any really pretty stainless colors, so don't be too judgmental. And you need to watch out for this slag. Make sure you have your safety glasses on, especially with the stainless, because it's gonna be popping off with the expansion and contraction. Oh see, there you go. See it? Yeah. Watch out for that slag. There's the inside of the first tack. You can see the slag on it. Now, once you get all four tacks in, make sure you feather them down real good. And uh, like I said, the 5G position, about 95 amps is what we're going to start with on the root. And that's the CST 280 Miller. Now, a lot of people don't have a whole lot of experience welding this flux coated wire, but like I said, it'll get you by in a pinch where you can't, you don't have access to purge or you can't purge for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of people just won't do it because it's different or it's a, it's a change in things or they have to go get a procedure accepted. But man, is it worth it? And uh, just to have just a backup in case you can't get a good purge and it'll leave a pretty bead in there. It takes a little bit of practice, but uh, you know, once you get it, it's, it's easy. Speaking of change in welders, Pipe welders, they're world's worst, and you ask them why they do it that way, and they say, because that's how daddy did it, and that's how his daddy did it, and uh, that's how we've always done it. And you try to get them to change one little aspect of something, and it's like pulling teeth for a welder. You know, they do not like change at all. And uh, it reminds me of that story, the woman, the old lady, she placed a magnet on the refrigerator that said, prayer changes things. And before the end of the day, her husband had taken that magnet down and she asked, what's wrong with you? You don't like prayer? And the husband looked at her and he said, sure, I like prayer. I just don't like change. He must have been a welder. But uh, anyway, like the husband, we may tend to resist change even when it is in our best interest because just like everybody else, we don't like change. While change is not easy for many of us, it is a part of life. Uh, philosopher Thomas Carlyle said, Change indeed is painful, yet ever needful. As the seasons change, we must also change, so that we might grow and also have hope. We might even take that woman's refrigerator advice and pray, God, I'm not what I ought to be, and I'm not where I want to be, but thanks to you, Lord, I'm not what I used to be. There's an old saying, God placed the best things in life on the other side of fear. So just remember that next time you're a little afraid of the change or you don't know where your next job's going to be or you don't want to go all the way across the country to take another weld test, just you got to get over that fear. There's no need for it. And sometimes it's, it's keeping you from some of the best things in life. Hope you guys are encouraged. And uh, just want to say thanks for tuning in. And we hope to see you next time. This is old Matt Orr. He's our lead instructor putting in the root here, showing us how it's done. Just to talk a little bit about his technique on this back feeding. What he likes to do is he'll be free handing from one side. He'll keep the wire connected to the puddle at all times. And if he needs to adjust something, or if it looks like it's getting a little too hot, he'll take the tungsten and go back out of the puddle to where he had been welding to kind of freak the puddle, you know, freeze the puddle and cool it off and then he can adjust things and then come back into it and keep going up the side and in that way you don't get a uh you know something that falls out or falls in on you but you can see him right here he'll 
kind of weld from side to side, keeping the rod inside the puddle, come out, he's freaking the puddle there. That's what I call it anyway. And uh, just gives you a little bit more control over things. And if you need to adjust something, you can. And uh, you know, it, it's a real quick motion, so it's gonna take a little bit of practice, but it'll save you uh, a lot of heartache and headache in, in the long run if you can, you know, figure out how to do it. Moving right along, we're gonna try to speed things up a little bit towards the end and uh, show you the other technique, uh, not the back feeding, but the keyhole dip once we get to the top side. Most of the end service wells that you're gonna have to make are in 5G. Here he is keeping that tungsten sharp. Great for fill wells if you can get that Scotsman tools, tungsten sharpener, it's battery powered, throw it in your bucket, take it up in the pipe rack with you. And uh, here he is scraping the flux off of one side of that flux coated wire. And all that's gonna do for that keyhole dip technique is give him a little bit better visibility of the puddle. He's not having to look through that uh, flux, basically. I always try to touch on the school a little bit and tell everybody what we have going on down here in Mobile, Alabama. And uh, basically, some of the things that set us apart from other pipe welding schools are one, the instructors. We have a five to one ratio. Two, our students don't have to bevel, prep, and clean pipe, except for one day a week. It's two inch Tuesdays, they gotta cut the two inch, bevel it, prep it, and weld it. Every other day, you weld one out, you just go get another pipe, it's already prepped for you. It gives our, our students about twice the amount of welding time as other schools. Number three, I would say is, it's there is no classroom time. Everything that's the, in the classroom is done online at the house. So you actually have 16 weeks of straight pipe welding all day, every day, if you wanted it. Uh, so it, I think it puts our students at an advantage over other schools because of these reasons. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success. People getting finished early in 12 weeks, they've completed everything and they've gone to work making $43 an hour. But uh, I always like to touch on the school, so, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video and you know we try to keep them short and sweet and just kind of one topic at a time straight to the point and then that way you're not having to deal with all the theatrics of these other shows and the other channels. Hopefully you like uh, what you see here and you can see him scraping this flux off the outside. Now it, when it's hot it is a little bit harder to get the flux off it, once it cools down and that's stainless. Uh, the slag is going to come on off real easy. And then on the inside, see so you can see the stainless colors in there. And it's it, it'll, it'll weld a good bead. No purge. 316 stainless. And then knocking it off the inside. Same deal. Now, he didn't knock it off all the way. So if you see some little black spots or shadows or whatever, that's what it is. Just some slag left on in there. We just wanted to show you real time. Knock it off. And there it is. No purge. Stainless root. That's shoot every day. We'll see you next time. Y'all enjoy.